This forgotten chocolate cake recipe from the 1800s should be having its moment right about now. Internet, are you ready? I'm just not gonna give up without a fight. Hi everyone, welcome to another installment of Jamie and Chef. You know what we do over here? It's a cookbook rotation show. <laughs> where, you know, I'll find a famous cookbook, hang out in that book for a bit, cook some recipes, get to know it a little bit, get to know the author or the chef or whatnot, and then I'll move on to someone else. So lately I've been hanging out in Fanny Farmer's The Original Boston Cooking School Cookbook, and this is the 1896 copy of the book. This is Fanny's vision right here, because you can get other copies of the book that have been updated and tweaked along the way, but not this one. It's a facsimile. So I'm skimming through this book looking for something to make today, and it's it's a gold mine in here. It honestly is so many great sounding recipes. Uh, but don't skim too fast because the book starts to shed. But I'm gonna stop in this cake chapter. It's very robust, lots of recipes. And I found this chocolate nougat cake. <laughs> and I looked online and I couldn't find any information about it. So I think this is gonna be the first, I mean, for sure the first video ever covering Fanny Farmer's chocolate nougat cake. But that also means I don't know what to expect. So yeah, we got the ingredient list. We got a small paragraph. I know what nougat is. You know, it's in all my uh, favorite candy bars, so it seems. And I get to make some white mountain cream that goes on top and between the layers of the cake. White mountain cream, it sounds heavenly. Uh, anyway. Let's get to work. Well, we're gonna start off with prepping our cake pans, but I'm gonna do this the exact way that Fanny recommends in the cookbook. So she says melted butter, just brush it in. Now, the only reason that I think that I'm prepping both of these is because I think I'm making two cakes. She doesn't specify, well, she does kind of. She says, bake 15 to 20 minutes in round layer cake pans. So, plural. Uh, I'm gonna bring over my big bag of flour. A little into both of these, and then we give it the old shimmy shake, just a very light layer of it. I know I'm using the non-stick pans, but it's better to be safe than sorry, as I have discovered the past six years of me making this show. Okay, well that is done. I find this incredibly interesting, but instead of granulated sugar today, <laughs> we're using powdered sugar. Now Fanny Farmer is the one that is kind of responsible for introducing exact measurements to the U.S. of A, uh, which means, you know, instead of a scoop of this powdered sugar here, I'm using a cup and a half. I'm super excited to welcome back the Silver Fox. Firmly believe that if Fanny had access to Silver Fox, she'd use it. Quarter cup of butter, softened. One and a half cups of this powdered sugar, gradually. And one unbeaten egg. So maybe a little to start. All right, let's get mixing. A little bit more powdered sugar. A little bit more. Carefully add that egg. So I'm gonna beat this until it's well mixed. I wonder if that was a typo. So is it possible that there's a mistake in this cookbook? Because she says here, one and a half cups of powdered sugar in the ingredient list, as well as one third cup of powdered sugar. But in the description here, she says, add one and a half cups of sugar. That's all it says. But later in the paragraph, she specifies when to add the powdered sugar. Why does she not specify powdered sugar here? So I wonder what the dealio is, because now that I've mixed this together, I'm like, So I'm using bread flour today, which is another interesting ingredient for this cake. Powdered sugar and bread flour. Fanny, what's going on? Bowl me. Thank you, because I'm gonna mix in my uh, dry ingredients. I need two cups of this bread flour. I scoop it into my measuring cup, but I'm not gonna pack it in there. There's one and two. In with the flour, three teaspoons of baking powder. Whisk that. We gotta turn the oven on and she doesn't specify what I should turn the oven on to. She just says, she just says bake it. Found this funny advertisement at the back of this book. The hub line of ranges, the world's best. Perfect for bakers. Is that what she was baking this cake in? 
We're gonna stick to a more modern oven and based on all the other cakes I've baked before, I'm gonna go with 350. Seems about right. Bring the silver fox back over here. So I have a total of one cup of milk. She says to add two thirds of it now. As soon as I added the milk in there, it ruined what I just did. The butter and the powdered sugar just separated from each other. If you add some flour, will that bring that back together? Will that bring it back? And then stream in more milk. Yeah. Thought if I just kept mixing it and added some flour to it, it would bring it back together and it didn't. There's nothing that is cohesive in this batter right now. I wanna add more fat to this thing to bring it back together, but I feel like I'm not following Fanny's recipe at that point. Uh, I wish I could release this video online, get my answers from the comment section, then come back and work on it again. Uh, but I'm stuck in a bind right now. <laughs> but I also don't wanna waste any more ingredients if this thing is doomed. One thing I have forgot to mention today is that my track record for making cakes the past two or three years is abysmal. Well, this cake right here has some serious problems. So I've been really trying to focus on turning a corner, hence why I'm so determined to get this one right today. Um, so yeah, food for thought. But in reality, I just don't wanna think about the food, I wanna make it. Butter, cream together first. Bowl me. So what I'm gonna do here first is sieve my powdered sugar because I don't want any powdered sugar clumps this time around. You can go back on. Gradually add in some sugar. In goes the unbeaten egg. Lukewarm milk instead of cold milk this time. A total of a cup worth, but I need to add two third cup now. I'm gonna stream in a little, just a little. If this breaks it up, I'm gonna cry. It has split again. Maybe that's just what happens with this recipe. So I should just proceed with caution. Two third cup of milk and the flour. This thing is stressing me out, man. That doesn't look like a good cake batter to me. Ugh. Oh my God, it's the milk. The milk is curdled. That is the reason why this cake batter isn't turning out. I wish it didn't take me two tries to figure out that it's the milk's fault, uh, but I did figure it out. So that's a shame, it really is. But, but there's, there's a but there. I don't know what for. Ready to give this another kick at the can. This time with fresh milk, butter, this powdered sugar. Unspoiled milk. All right, please, please work. This is now splitting too. What the f frick, Fanny? The only thing I can think of is that it's the powdered sugar. Like, is it too fine for this? Wasting ingredients and food on this situation here. Uh, but I can't even get past the first step. There's probably someone smarter than me out there that has the answer to this of why this is splitting. Cakes are affected by sugar density, so I would use granulated sugar. How do you add milk? So I'm just gonna look at other cake recipes in this book and gauge how much granulated sugar I should add into this batter. Because I know that 
you should be using less granulated sugar than you would powdered sugar in this circumstance. Let's try it again. Here we frickin' go, one cup of granulated sugar. I don't know what else to do at this current point in my life. Why don't we just add a little flour just to get the party started slowly. Milk, add a little. Is that gonna ruin everything already? Still operational. Proceeding with caution. I think we got something here. Okay, we can move on to the next step, I think. The rest by hand, half a teaspoon vanilla extract, two squares of chocolate. I had to look that up, apparently that's two ounces worth, which is that. Unsweetened chocolate into a small saucepan, get that melted. And in with the melted chocolate, one third cup of powdered sugar. Now like a medium low heat. Please mix, please mix, it said it would mix. It's not really working, but then I gradually add in the remaining milk, she says. I really don't know what I was expecting with that. Gradually, gradually add that milk. I mean, this isn't coming together either. This is something that has happened to me so many times. It's just the chocolate's kind of being a bit of a brat uh, and it's not commingling with the, the milk. So I'm gonna take some of the methods I've learned on this show, carry them forward into what I'm about to do. Ballsy, I know, but it's gotta be done. So Fanny said to add the chocolate, melt it first, then add the milk and the powdered sugar. That didn't work for me. First I heated up the milk, then I added the chocolate, then the powdered sugar, and voila, kinda there. Long story short here, but some of the chocolate, I mean like a small fraction of it, uh, seized. I would say about 2%. <laughs> and then some powdered sugar lumps in there just did not unlump. So I am just passing this through this strainer here. Any of the less desirable pieces can stay at the top. And it's working, it's working. Once this chocolate has cooled slightly, add it to the cake mixture. I'm going in the order which this book is telling me to go in. It told me to make the cake batter first, then melt the chocolate, do all that. Fanny told me to go in this order, so that's what I've been doing. Okay, that is mixed. Sorry for the mess, everyone, but I'm supposed to add the cake batter into my pans two third of the way up these things. I mean, I'm assuming two cake pans, because she says layers, cake pans, plural. I have enough for one. She says to evenly distribute this around the cake pan, and then to kind of create a little bit of a, um, what is the opposite of a dome? Created a little bit of a depression in the center, otherwise everything else is level. As per what Fanny has told me to do, there is a cake pan that will not be participating in this cake today. This recipe is so just kind of of, of a mind f that I don't even know if this is gonna turn out, so there's no point in doubling the recipe right now. Let's just go with the one. So what we're gonna do is bake this, she says for 15 to 20 minutes, but I'm gonna use my baking expertise or lack thereof to figure out when it's finished. But yeah, let's say 15 to 20 minutes. Cake, when done, shrinks from the pan, and in most cases, this is a sufficient test. Well, it is shrinking from the pan, right? I would say that this cake is looking pretty done to me. It has started to shrink. Uh, it did take longer than I expected it to, but that's because I felt that batter was really thick. And because I'm just using the one cake tin rather than two, uh, yeah, I just think that it's done after, it's done. Oh yeah, this is looking nice. Okay, so that's after 28 minutes. She says sooner rather than later, flip this cake onto your cooling rack. <laughs> that was, uh, you didn't see that. Remove the cake, oh 
yeah! That's what I'm talking about. That's nice. I can't tell you how tempting it is uh, to flip this cake so that this part right here is on the bottom and the rounder part's on the top. Let this cool a bit. Then it's the white mountain cream. Where the hell am I going? Uh, now I've read over this white mountain cream recipe a couple times now to fully understand what I'm about to embark on. And it reminds me of Italian meringue. Here's the thing, it's gonna be kind of go time once this thing is made, because you have to quickly pour it on top of your cake. I was thinking since this cake looks so good, why don't you slice it in half and then you can put icing, white mountain cream on in between the halves and then you can put it on top as well. And I was like, you know what? Why screw up a good thing? Especially when, <laughs> just flip it over so that the round shape's on top. I just want to pour it on top. I think that's what I'm going to do instead of mucking about with anything else tonight. So, cake's off to the side. Ingredients are right here. I think all we got to do is climb the mountain. So with my small saucepan, add a cup of sugar and a cup of water. Bowl me. Thank you. Add in the egg whites of only one egg. She just says a beaten white of an egg. So I'm going to assume that's stiff peaks. Just to keep everyone in the know, I screwed that up. I was supposed to add only half a cup of water in with the sugar, so I've removed half. <laughs> so I gotta boil the syrup without stirring it. Just keep it moving. There we go. Dunk a fork into the syrup. If it starts to thread, thread, which I think is, yeah, thread. I'd say that's threading. That's threading, right? Pour it into the egg white. If this is not beaten long enough, frosting will run. If it's beaten too long, it will not be smooth. Squeeze in half a tablespoon of lemon juice and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. This kind of looks like a marshmallow and also isn't nougat kind of like a kind of marshmallow vibe to it as well. Mm. Two third cup of almonds shredded. So I'm gonna use slivered almonds. I definitely do not need two third cup worth. I mean, that's shredded, right? What I need to do, what, what I think I should do is grab this, it's just like a, I'm just gonna slide it underneath the cake. You know, we've got a contingency plan in case it doesn't want to, to move once the icing's on. So on top of the cake, let's pour on the white mountain cream. I think that's perfect. Yeah, it's gonna start spreading. Okay, so what do I gotta do? What do I gotta do while this thing is still sticky? Sprinkle with almonds. Say when, say when, I could go all day. With nougat, uh, that has nuts in it. So here's the nut part of the nougat on this cake. The only thing left to do is that. Order up! Look at that cake. It's just like structurally speaking, it's all there. It's very moist and delicious and flavor-wise a little more subtle than I expected. I thought it'd be more chocolatey, but it's it's really, it's toned down in the chocolate. It's kind of in between chocolate and vanilla. So you could push it a bit further in the chocolate arena if you were so inclined. You'd kind of be going off book though. You know, good luck. Now super interesting with the frosting on top, it's, yeah, it's kind of tastes like a marshmallow, but it's nougat. Well, kind of. I think that nougat's supposed to be firmer and chewier. 
uh, where this is still kind of, as you can see here, it's kind of running a little bit. So you could probably make that consistency a bit thicker. Uh, also, I don't know if it was supposed to be like resembling a white mountain cap or something, cause it's called white mountain cream. But you could also calm down with the nuts on top, I feel. It's a very unique dessert. I've never had anything like that before and it's incredibly delicious. It'd be really fun to bring that somewhere and go, check this sucker out and see everyone's reactions. Alas, I am here by myself and my lady is at work. Julia Child, better look out. We're making cakes over in the Fanny Farmer cookbook, even though I was incredibly, incredibly confused. This recipe is very difficult to follow, I found, especially since I've been learning all these other methods of making cakes and then you throw this into the ring, you're like, what the hell is happening? So I'm glad that we figured it out and I, and then we got a delicious chocolate nougat cake to show it off. I only wish you could have a slice. That's it, that's all. This was Jamie and Fanny. Bye bye. <laughs>